Hello and welcome to the News Minute. It's been eight years since Hyderabad University research scholar Rohit Vemala passed away. His death triggered a new political wave across the country. There are uh, several uh, university campuses that uh, held uh, events uh, commemorating his death uh, and uh, uh, the politics that he has left behind. To talk about this, I have with me TNM's executive editor Sudeep Tomondal and uh, TNM's uh, feature editor Bala. Thank you so much for joining uh, Sudeep Toh and Bala. Uh, Sudeep Toh, you have uh, been to Hyderabad. You visited uh, the university campus uh, yesterday. You, you also met uh, the family of Rohit Vemala. What has changed on the campus and uh, how is, uh, uh, first of all, I want to ask how is Rohit Vemala's family members? Right. Uh, thank you, Shabir, uh, for having us on the show. And uh, before anything, I also want to say that uh, Bala was with me yesterday and uh, we were together in the campus. And uh, I hope I speak for, for him over here when I say that uh, after so many years, you know, to be back in the same campus, uh, to, to listen to those uh, same slogans, uh, you know, and uh, to, to uh, take in the fact that uh, his memory uh, is still intact, uh, was, was uh, both inspiring and also uh, a little unsettling. Bala, am I, am I wrong in saying this? You know, to listen to those slogans, it's a little haunting. Uh, you know, for yeah. example, the, the, the first time in my career, you know, I've, I've, I've mostly worked in Karnataka and things like that. So, you know, uh, the slogan Johar, you know, I think Bala can speak more about it. You know, Johar, Rohit Vemura, is a very famous or popular slogan from that time. You know, to listen to that slogan itself was quite a evocative experience. Uh, Bala? Uh, you want to chip in here? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's been uh, nearly eight years, and uh, the family uh, uh, naturally feels that justice has evaded them because there is no progress in the case, or neither, uh, uh, you know, they, they, the family couldn't move on from what has happened to Rohit. And uh, uh, each time the students, uh, you know, come with, uh, you know, approach them for, you know, uh, approach the family asking to participate in the Shahad that then uh, one can only imagine what must have like you know the people uh, Radhika Ma, uh, and Raja must be going through because it is like going through the same pain again 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 and uh, there is no sight of justice yet so uh, all the slogans and all yeah they, they are they seem to instill some uh, sense of uh, resilience uh, that the moment hasn't died down and uh, the student community will still fight uh, as long that as long it takes yeah. in fact uh, Shabir Bhai, uh, i was in guntur i traveled with the family from guntur to hyderabad and you know, just to get a sense of the same question that you asked and you know, as to how they're doing uh, how, how okay how do i put it i mean for starters for me it's a positive that uh, radhika vemula's health has improved you know, because uh, at the time of the movement uh, her health was in, in a very precarious condition. You know, her BP, her other parameters. You know, it was it was literally life threatening at the time. For example, when she went to Shahin Bagh, you might uh, all remember that she hoisted the flag in Shahin Bagh uh, along with, I believe, uh, Najib's mother uh, and uh, the dadi uh, dadis who were there in in Shahin Bagh. At that time, uh, it was against doctor's advice uh, that she went there. So it was positive for me to see that okay, so health wise, she's doing better. Uh, uh, Raja you know, uh, was a geologist uh, from a central university, uh, from the Pondicherry Central University, and he had to give up on his career uh, for two reasons. One, of course, uh, immediately when his colleagues and uh, wherever he was, he was working, he was working in a, uh, in a, in a central government uh, institute at that point. Immediately, uh, you know, there was a kind of hostility from his colleagues when they discovered he's Raja Vemula, uh, that is Rohit uh, Vemula's brother. He quit, and then, of course, he got involved in the movement. And it was very disturbing for me because I tried to document their lives uh, post Rohit. You know that he was without a job, and the mother and the son were traveling to different parts of the country. You know, uh, going from one protest to another. And as you know, that was uh, almost an era of of, of protests. You know, there was uh, not just Shahin Bagh and, and the NRCCA issue. There was UNA. Uh, there was the demolition of uh, the Ambedkar Bhavan in, uh, in Mumbai. Uh, there was Bhima Koregaon. Uh, a variety of such human rights issues uh, cropped up, and Radhika Vemula and Raja Vemula would invariably you know, land up to show their uh, support and solidarity. 
so it was it was it was it obviously took a great toll on them you know? so now when i went i discovered that finally he has a job again he started working again you know and i it is it should give uh, you know anybody from the dalit community a lot of inspiration to look at raja vemula's life because uh, while he was traveling across the country uh, attending these protests translating things for his mother you know because he, if you notice any of the things in the past 8 years in any event it is radhika vemula who speaks but it is raja vemula from behind who is translating who is helping her you know and all that so uh, he lost a lot of time you know at a time when most young people are trying to build a career you know this boy was going around with his mother fighting for his brother you know things like that so he in the meantime despite all these things finished his law you know and he he became a lawyer and now in addition to law he's also doing some other uh, things and he's at least you know uh, employed properly that was for me a great thing to see you know uh, but like uh, like like bala said you know the substantive issues you know what happened to the case for instance uh, that uh, you know the, the, the abatement issue the last case. update I, i remember was last year where uh, i read a newspaper report which said uh, that uh, the charge sheet haven't been uh, you know hasn't been filed in that uh, uh, particular case so and between us we can we can guesstimate what will happen to that right i don't think a charge sheet is going to be filed anytime soon you know and if i just want to i i just also want to find a bring into perspective you know this this the role played by the uh, former brs or the prs government uh, there are four cases shabir okay uh, one is that case where uh, the abvp leader sushil kumar he accused the uh, ambedkar students association uh, activist of assaulting him and uh, journalistic in- investigations and uh, you know immediately uh, threw up the fact that no you know in fact uh, the operation that he claimed he had to undergo because of that assault was actually an appendix operation which right. was pending for some time right uh, and uh, that indicated clearly that this was a foisted and a false case uh, nevertheless so that is one case then there is of course the second case uh, filed by uh, a phd scholar now of course he's dr dinta prashant the back then he was a research scholar and a leader of the asa so he had filed the case against not just uh, the abvp activists in the campus but also bjp leaders bandaru dattatreya ramchandra rao and uh, smriti irani right? and that is the case i suppose which will uh, you know because i i don't want to preempt the judiciary i don't want to preempt the uh, you know the actions of the police but 8 years is enough time to file a charge sheet and to pursue the case and i don't think that case is going anywhere now i was talking about the role of the brs earlier and this is where i think this case how the how kcr uh, and his uh, his police force you know uh, crack down on the on the on the students is i suppose the biggest evidence that anybody needs to uh, understand what role the brs played uh, in aiding the bjp in in containing these protests so there are two cases filed by the state against the students one uh, involves uh, on the day of uh, the death itself uh, the students were the, the police was trying to forcibly take the body away and uh, the students were protesting they were demanding that the body should be uh, kept there till the family came correct uh, bala you were in campus yeah, yeah. so I, i just want to also point out that bala bala krishna was a student at that point in that very campus uh, uh and uh, along with our former colleague uh, charan teja both of them were uh, very much in that campus part of these agitations you know so what happened is immediately after the death the student the police tried to take the body away and the students protested and they turned it into a case of rioting saying that they assaulted the medical staff that came and things like that you know so that is one police case the other one was where they uh, tear out the vc's uh, uh, law office it is residence in the in the, in the campus yeah, yeah. and that they turned into another very serious case of rioting and things like that in fact i was back then in the hindustan times you know in that rioting case uh, around 22 students were put behind bars in the chanchalguda prison you know and uh, i broke a story at that point showing that the judge who was presiding over the bail matter her husband was working in ramchandra rao's office you know it was a clear case of conflict of interest and uh, that story i suppose in a sense you know uh, put pressure on the on the judge to grant bail so all i'm trying to say is that that entire uh, uh, the way the pieces were set was en- was entirely the doing of the kcr government at that point the lati charge on the students radhika vemla was arrested by the way uh, you know i was arrested at that point you know uh, detained not arrested both of us uh, that is the first anniversary of rohit's death where she just wanted to go inside 
and uh, put a put a, a garland on her son's uh, bust, the statue that is inside the campus. And the police wouldn't allow them to do that, and instead they were arrested uh, or detained for almost uh, four five hours. They just took us on a <laughs> you know tour of Hyderabad in a in a police jeep in a van. You know, so this these kind of things are a clear uh, telltale you know, uh, sign of how the you know, BRS really acted as an extended arm of the BJP at that time. And uh, now that there is a allegedly secular, allegedly progressive, allegedly anti-caste party in power, you know, called the Congress, you know, in, in, in Telangana. What uh, I am interested to see is what this man does. Uh, what's his name, uh, Bala? Uh, Raven Thread, you know, no, the deputy chief minister. Uh, uh, Bati Vikramarka. Bati Vikramarka. Bati Vikramarka. And, uh, incidentally, Bati Vikramarka is a, is a product of uh, University of Hyderabad also. Hyderabad, right. Yeah. And from what I understand, uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, you know, I have some people who, who don't want to report it, who say that they are struggling to get an appointment with uh, this deputy chief minister so that they can go and ask him, sir, please drop these cases. You know, so the police have filed against the thing. So I don't know. I mean, uh, you know that 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 is a big question mark before the before the Congress government right now in power in Telangana. So, Sudipto, what has uh, changed in the past eight years? Talking about uh, you know university campuses, because Rohit Vemula's death is still something that is debated uh, on campuses. Uh, it created a new kind of uh, discussion, a new kind of politics on campus. What has changed after eight years? Mm, there are there have been some positives in terms of how uh, you know uh, there's a great amount of awareness in the student body on the question of caste and harassment and you know, as as you said in your introduction uh, there were uh, commemorative events in most uh, campuses across the country uh, particularly the central universities Pondicherry uh, JNU Gujarat Central University Case. Uh, National Law School in Bangalore are some of the places that I know of. But you know, across the country, there were these commemorative events, not just on the 17th, which is yesterday, but in the lead up to uh, the Shahadat Din. So, in that sense, I do feel like uh, this, this, this increased awareness, this, 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 this organizing around the anti caste question is a very uh, positive development because at least now uh, potential caste harassers at least know that there is a body of students who are united on. On a particular issue. So I was talking about how there is a, a lot of mobilization in campuses. You know, there's a lot of awareness. You know, uh, there are like for example the ASA, you know, the organization from which uh, Rohit came, has units across the country. Of course, they are not connected to each other. You know, but there are many uh, uh, campuses in which uh, there is an organization called the Ambedkar Students Association, just like there is in uh, Hyderabad University. Uh, what has not changed, uh, Bala? I mean. You want to come in here? Do you want to talk about the? Uh, you know, you guys were also in the on the ground at that point, the Rohit Act and these things. How how important do you think it is? Yeah. Uh, what hasn't changed? Uh, I think f first we have to address, uh, like as uh, Sudipta said, so the there is an increased caste consciousness around uh, you know uh, university uh, significantly. Uh, so no case of uh, harassment are like you know taken lightly. So that is one. What has changed is, uh, I mean, uh, from the moment perspective, uh, so th uh, the moment when it started, it had a coalition of many groups, like all progressive yeah. groups. So, which had uh, like, you know, uh, along with ASA, you had SFI, you have uh, DSU, Dalit Students Union, uh, you had uh, MSF, all the several organizations, which are all, except for ABUP, every organization was part of that moment. Uh, and it was held under the uh, uh, Joint Action Committee. It was called Justice for Rehith Mevla Movement uh, Joint Action Committee. Later, uh, as the uh, protests uh, like you know, sh started from Hyderabad, the focus uh, started going to Delhi when uh, these JNU students uh, uh, like Shaila Rashid Kanaya and Umar Kali started taking those, uh, you know, started leading those protests and uh, it, took, it, it took a shape of its own uh, and uh, it was naturally felt that you know that uh, the cause is getting uh, defeated uh, under uh, uh, you know several things like you know uh, there's a, suddenly there's a, some discussion around kashmir and uh, everything so suddenly there is uh, when that happened uh, there was also feeling amongst amongst the asa students that you know that there is some form of appropriation of the struggle and besides that in you know, the purpose 
uh, is like you know is getting distracted from the real purpose so the uh, the as a student students they had a specific purpose of like you know how they want to achieve the justice achieve justice for rohit uh, so in that sense uh, so they they had to obviously uh, uh, you know form a different uh, uh, they formed a group under a different banner so after that many many other students groups are not uh, part of it but so uh, since then uh, since the first had that then uh, uh, only the asa has been primarily uh, you know part, uh, participating in it uh, of course the, the, some students uh, you know voluntarily participate in it but uh, from the students like you know as a community like the srfi or any other community i mean any other students organization they don't uh, take a uh, active participation in it no so just to add to what bala was saying shabir bhai okay uh, you know uh, caste harassment is a particular issue okay uh, which affects sc st obc students right because uh, you know these are the so called quota candidates the so called unmeritorious right and uh, uh, you know that it is a, it is a particular problem of these communities rohit's issue and particularly that letter made it a general issue of interest right what Ra- bala i suppose is trying to say is that there were there were like all sorts of all shades of political uh, outfits which suddenly got triggered and really moved by the uh, the power of that letter uh, true absolutely true and uh, and and it suddenly became a general issue right caste harassment in campuses and things like that and then over time the status quo was restored which is it went back to being a particular issue right uh, where uh, you know they they, they became a Uh, students bodies went back to doing what they do uh, the left students unions went their their way there were organizations such as the SIO and the MSF uh, students islamic organization and the uh, uh, muslim students front uh, you know the jamaat e islami and the uh, uh, muslim leagues student fronts and uh, somehow today i feel that there is again you know uh, all the so called non bjp progressive uh, you know organizations are pulling in different directions and once again this issue has become only an sc st obc issue the issue of discrimination on campuses and that is why i think uh, you know it is important to talk about the rohit act which was proposed yeah, by exactly. some of these that, that that was my next question that yeah. even uh, you know in the case of uh, darshan solanki yeah. the iit student who died yeah. uh, uh, from iit mumbai uh, even after his death uh, uh, the students from that particular uh, campus were also demanding that uh, Uh, rohit act should be uh, yeah. you know passed yeah yeah and uh, which is why i think uh, there's a lot of expectation from this state government this congress state government i understand that in a central university they can't design policy but they can definitely build discourse right mm-hmm. what should an anti discrimination law look like in a campus which is literally uh, a microcosm of society every what i understand understand about these particularly about these central universities is man you have people all over the country you have people from all castes and communities you have people of all genders right and uh, then you have one among them you have different different subsets and there is one big middle which is hindu upper caste because it's a central university social science university they most they're not rich kids they might be middle class hindu upper caste kids right who tend to define Who, who attempt to define everybody, you know, saying that that middle is is the big chunk means everybody needs to fall into that that middle, and people who don't fall into the middle are the ones who get discriminated, right? And that includes not just S C S T O B C students, it includes Muslim students, it includes you know uh, students from other uh, regions such as the North East, you know, uh, they get a lot of uh, flack in these kind of places, uh, sexuality minorities. so this rohit act when we talk about it as an anti discrimination act you know i remember it being a conversation that was actually that broad it was not just an scst obc thing because uh, students need to uh, uh, study in an atmosphere where they are not singled out where they are not uh, uh, you know uh, discriminated where discriminated where their differences don't become the point of uh, harassment you know the reason for their harassment really so that is really up in the air as to who will revive that uh, thing will will it be the congress now i don't know bala uh, do you still think that uh, there are several institutions particularly the central uh, universities and central institutions that are still hostile towards uh, sc st and obc students is that uh, 
still the atmosphere in most of the uh, campuses i mean uh, any atrocity i mean it is like now we have to just believe that you know because uh, th- th- there is no way that uh, the system is designed that you know that of course we have a, uh, you know different uh, cells like you know students welfare cell all this which which are ideally supposed to uh, act as a space where uh, the students grievances are getting addressed and all but the i think uh particularly in this uh, iit I, iit kind of institutions there is no such mechanism uh i don't think uh, see uh, rohit uh, rohit uh, rohit uh, it uh, rohit had died in a central university but uh, his like you know his case was still known because uh, these uh, public funded campuses are largely uh, they have uh, students from the uh, la, la, you know dalit marginalized communities so there is a student community who are actively uh, engaging with the students and uh, if uh, even if something happens you know the exact cause of death but in other institutions i, I like you know because of the caste representation uh, caste representation we don't we don't know that that you know if there's an active students group you know seeking reaching out to each other Uh, here in uh, like you know from my own experience i can tell uh, in a, in central university so you step into your new university and you are already forging an alliance meaning that you know uh, uh, when uh, the students are there to reach out to you to help you they understand that you know people from different uh, you know uh, you know communities from you know, far flung areas are coming going to come here and they would be needing some form of some form of help so they'll be helping you with uh, you know with your application like you know providing you some uh, stationary equipment all this so so they are trying to so that's how like you know you forge uh, like you know relationship in this uh, uh, immediately and these people like you know they stick out to you like you know if we are, and reach out to you if we have any problem but unfortunately this is not the cases in uh, iit or anywhere like you know the where the discussion around caste is largely largely non existent right uh, since it's a, it's a space where you know uh, where mostly the privileged uh, you know uh, students attend so there is like uh, uh, there is no way that you know they, they don't find it actually as a problem right that uh, that should be addressed also so so in that sense uh, only if there is an active group working for dalits or anything they would be like you know actively engaging and probably the, uh, their concerns would be addressed uh, so un- unfortunately i think yeah there is a last o- lots of hostility i feel that you know uh, when it comes to other institutions which has poor representation of uh, uh, students coming from the adivasi communities or like you know dalit adivasi communities uh, uh sudeep so talking about awareness is there uh, still uh, awareness on ground is there more awareness from what we saw 8 years ago like you said uh, there are uh, people who are talking about these issues but uh you know there are some political parties or some uh, you know political outfits that would never uh, discuss about these issues but now after rohit's death these issues are being taken seriously these issues are being debated in different forums so is there more awareness or what is it like yeah thanks thanks for you know bringing that into the discussion now sabir because i think you know uh, when we look at uh, you know uh, the nuts and bolts it's a little uh, disappointing or demoralizing you know, because uh, like wala said there are no substantive measures in these uh, these so called premier institutes just yesterday in fact uh, uh, i think bharti uh, from your bureau is working on this story where in iim bangalore uh, you know there's a complaint about how this pro- this bunch of professors have been trying to push for an scsd cell you know something as simple which is a statutory requirement you know and this professor had put out one thing saying that do you want more rohits you know to happen and why aren't you just putting some basic safety measures so you know we are talking about premier institutes like that where there is a blatant violation of statutes itself about uh, you know so on one side there is that uh, pain point but uh, you know if you look back uh, at these 8 years these 8 years globally and in india have uh, been defined by the questions uh, by questions around identity right uh, whether it is the black lives matter movement or the rohit vemula movement the rohit vemula movement was one of the most powerful political movements of this era 
uh, uh, not me, but you know, uh, some very uh, established scholars have called it the third Dalit wave. You know, uh, the first one being in the time of Ambedkar, uh, the second one being uh, BSP Kanchi Ram, you know, uh, that time, and the third being Rohit Vemula. And as you know, it is something that resonated across the world. You know, uh, Rohit Vemula movement was something that was, uh, of course, it was in the age of the internet, so it, it, the issue spread also very quickly. Uh, but uh, there was a point at which, uh, you know, there was a kind of a brilliant coalescing or a coming together uh, of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and the Rohit Memla movement uh, in the US, right, where uh, you have activists today like, uh, you know, Tenmoi Soundarajan, Suraj Engde, uh, Yashika Dat, yes, Sujata yes. Gedla, you know. Uh, all these people, you have organizations such as the ANA, for example, the Ambedkarites Association of North America, has existed for a long time. The Ambedkar International Center, the Ambedkar International Mission, these are, these are several decades old. But they came into circulation, they became known, not just uh, in America, but globally, uh, as a result they of... Were, they were able to build a coalition also. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. With Shama Savant and, you know, there were Muslim groups there. There were uh, Sikh groups there. And it is so interesting to see that uh, different marginalized uh, communities uh, from South Asia, not just India, uh, working together in the US, working together in Australia, in, in the UK, in different parts of Europe, right? Uh, uh, today, you have Dalit activists turning out for struggles against uh, demanding uh, accountability in Palestine from Israel, you know? And uh, this, this uh, you know, at one point, it used to be a joke when people used to talk about intersectionality, right? Uh, but we did see on the ground these forces coming together, working together, and they are working, for example, in the California bill, the Seattle bill. Uh, Shabir, you have reported quite uh, extensively on this thing. You saw the formation, right? How interesting is that? These are people who probably didn't even know each other's names or, or, they, or know about each other's existence, but they discovered common ground, and that for me is fantastic, right? And how did that happen? It started with a letter. That's how powerful that document was. And uh, for me, I, I just can't uh, ignore the the, 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 the the supernova that happened, that, that explosion that happened in that campus, right? Because who have you now? I mean, you have artists, you have uh, 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 singers, you have rappers, you have filmmakers, comedians, you know, who identify as anti-caste, who identify as progressive, who identify as non-Sanghi, non-American uh, capitalist. You know, there, there, there are so many isms, uh, which isms of oppression, today which are being taken on by the marginalized thanks to these triggers. I would say Travion Martin was one such trigger, you know, because of whom Black Lives Matter happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Rohit Vemula, because of whom this entire anti-caste surge happened. And in India also, right? I mean, uh, it is unfortunate what has become of a Shahela Rashid or uh, the fact that, you know, the great communist uh, uh, student leader has become just a garden variety Congress leader, Tanaya Kumar. You know, uh, there were so many hopes that, oh, this guy, this young man will revive the communist uh, you know, ideology. But in the end of the day, he becomes a Congress guy. You know, all of this has happened. But we can't forget that these people, this entire generation is a post-Rohit generation, to my mind. They are because he was. So also, I want to ask this question to both Sudipto and Bala. When we talk about uh, university campuses, there is a general saying that uh, most of the university campuses have this anti-reservation sentiment. And this is a, a, a discourse that is being carefully crafted and pushed into these universities, uh, uh, like you earlier pointed out. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the recent past, has this changed or uh, political parties coming up with uh, new tactics to try and garner support from uh, marginalized communities? How has this changed uh, uh, in the last few years? I think... Uh... From being anti-reservation, the government has now uh, co-opted the actually the reservation. That's how now you have this uh, EWS reservation, right? Uh, they are like you know uh, all these election machines. They like uh, BJP, uh, which introduced EWS. All uh, they uh, like unlike uh, their uh, like you know their ideological organizations. They understand. Uh, how electoral politics work and uh, they acknowledge a uh, large form of uh, oppression. They acknowledge and uh, they understood that, you know, they can't, uh, you know, deny anybody reservation. And in fact, they are like, you know, all these uh, leaders, they say that you know, they will uh, 
uh, give more reservation by depriving uh, reservation for muslims so that is their argument so they are, they are not saying that you know they be like of course you have fringe elements on uh, internet like you know they will be talking about like you know the far right uh, they will be talking about you know reservation but the thing is the government carefully has in, instead of like you know uh, like going hard on like you know uh, on their anti reservation they instead it use the reservation argument to uh, give more reservation to the already privileged and uh, and this is supposedly under a, what you call it doesn't have uh, any uh, it, you, you don't call it uh, a reservation for upper caste you call it uh, you know for economic uh, weaker sections and so this is hailed as some master stroke because uh, the supposed the reservation doesn't see uh, any form of uh, bias or anything so the, the, the reservation is going to exist and irrespective of like what kind of uh, you know what kind of talk in fringe and uh, fringe elements are going because the bjp or anyone they ca- cannot undermine the struggles they are no in no position to undermine uh, the struggles of the and in fact uh, if you witnessed uh, uh, you know their election campaigns bjp's they have uh, won elections only because of like you know some form of uh, wooing to the uh, communities which were neglected they didn't mm-hmm. form uh, governments uh, purely going by their uh, what their ideology uh, like you know what their supposed uh, like you know ideology uh, says they they are an uh, election machine they, they are in- engineering coalitions uh, by reaching out to, uh, in fact in uh, west bengal and all their campaign it was largely uh, you know successful uh, because not because of like you know like it's like it, it, bjp doesn't have phantom power it is reaching out to some groups which have been neglected for long like the these are the groups which have been vying for power for many years and now there is a group which is trying try, you know giving them power and which is emboldening them to reach out so similarly now here in uh, telangana in, in in telangana now you are you see primarily uh, the the whole discussion is around bc leadership in fact mm-hmm. uh, here in telangana uh the the bjp boldly claim that you know if the bjp cover, comes to power they will have a bc chief minister so they are reaching out to the groups like uh, they are looking out to the groups uh, which are actively looking uh, which have which have been de- denied power so in andhra pradesh now again we have a reddy chief minister so uh, andhra pradesh entire history is about how uh, you know group which is uh, numerically less but they have held on power for so long and only kcr using the uh, state uh, you know statehood movement was able to uh, take over like uh, obviously kcr again belongs to another you know privileged caste but uh, but anyway this is this has been the larger uh, you know amongst the bahujans also this is like you know bahujans or like you know, there's a, uh, there is a feeling that you know this is uh, like we have to let go so and uh, bjp is actually using the bahujan language bjp is using the bahujan language of uh, when uh, ksr was the chief minister they called him dora so all this is a language which the bahujan speak so uh, we, can, we cannot dismiss uh, bjp saying uh, bjp saying that they are anti reservationists or not they are not they are using it uh, in a different way and the people who are benefiting out of it they are calm about it because 10% re- e- ews reservation is not a joke for, a, for like you know when they have such a poor like you know less number of uh, you know stu- students hmm so the not just the, not just the, i mean I, that's a brilliant point thanks for uh, bringing that into the discussion uh, pala you know because uh, when he talks about this thing right i mean shabir you and i also were looking at subaltern hindutva or what we call as non brahmin hindutva you know and how these communities uh, get mobilized based on local grievances uh, based on the fact that caste is a system of graded inequality which means that yes you may have uh, communities listed under obc but they are not the same there is a hierarchy among them uh, you may have caste listed under sc but there is again a hierarchy among them st there is a hierarchy you know it's not like sc is a caste there are multiple castes within the sc hold and uh, this unfortunate thing that we see which is that Uh, the most marginalized among them are the ones who are getting uh, brainwashed or attracted by the bjp we see them playing politics with the mang matang community in maharashtra we see them playing politics with the arundhatiers uh, or the madigas right uh, 
uh, we see them playing politics in bengal i very interestingly bala brought up the example of bengal i uh, you know have some roots going back to that state uh, you know but uh, so i take some interest over there the motua community right the motua community who are a, a very powerful a very well organized uh, community so uh, you know uh, how they have managed to engineer a split within the motua so one section of the motua are with uh, pmc uh the other is with the bjp so the matua is basically it's like a uh, it's like a kind of a new uh, faith system shall we say you know uh, it was it's not more than 100 years old you know where there were these two uh, kind of messianic figures who emerged in the matua uh, in among the namashudra community of bengal one was uh, harichand thakur and gurchand thakur they came up with a message which was very similar to ambedkar saying that you know let's stop worshiping false gods let's focus on education let's focus on organizing ourselves let's focus on uh, self respect so the harichand thakur guruchand thakur thakur that family right survives to till to this day and they are seen as the big figures of the matua community so that family has now witnessed a split where the mother is with uh, the tmc whereas uh, one, of, one of her sons is now a bjp rs uh, rajya sabha member right so how they play this thing is is the best evidence you can find as to the fact that the bjp is not uh, outside of this discussion of social justice they have found a way to pervert the concept of social justice by playing one caste against another caste you know and that is uh, the true uh, danger and, and of course i mean when i say this i also should uh, be unfair for me to just pin it on the bjp because every community every party that has ever come to power in in in, in india has come on come to power on the backs of these communities whether it is the communists whether it is the congress right uh for example when baba saheb was pushing a radical agenda they found a babu jagjivan ram to defeat his agenda right so this is a old history of how you play one against the other and this is the history of the subcontinent really you know well to conclude this uh, conversation i'll read uh, you know excerpts from rohit vemula's letter uh from shadows to the stars that's how a lot of uh, newspapers had headlined that uh, letter the value of a man was reduced to his immediate identity and nearest possibility to a vote to number to a thing never was a man treated as a mind as glorious things made up of stars in every field in studies in streets in politics and in dying and in living i am writing this letter i i am writing this kind of letter for the first time my first time of a final letter forgive me all if i fail to make sense my birth is my fatal accident i can never recover from my childhood loneliness the unappreciated child from my past so it's a long letter i would uh, suggest that uh, you know i would recommend it's a very powerful document <laughs> yeah, like uh, what sudeep to said you know this letter will definitely move you so if you are listening to this conversation if you want to know about what happened 8 years ago and how this entire uh, you know rohit vemula protest rohit vemula movement started and how it became a talking point across the country the first point is you go read this letter mm-hmm. and then you will get to know what exactly uh, you know has happened in all these years and why we need to talk about rohit vemula every year it's not just like university campuses but i would suggest that it, it should be a larger discussion on a on a on a daily basis you know in our newsrooms or in your working workplace or in your university campuses thank you so much uh, bala and uh, sudeep to can i also for, add a, yeah can, go can ahead. i also i mean i just also want to quickly add over here that uh, you know while we appreciate this letter while while we uh, you know uh, appreciate uh, we, we celebrate the life of rohit vemula you know we should not forget that we cannot celebrate what he did and uh, you know it is you know I, i do want if anybody you know young people who are watching this uh, this discussion should know that uh, you know uh, you know it is not the solution you know and uh, you know we should not uh, you know uh, attribute this this kind of martyrdom right we should see it as a murder like an inc- that's why i like uh, the articulation that came from the scholars in the campus it was an institutional order not yeah, i want to actually the first time that yeah. word was coined Yes. Yeah, and now uh, uh, predominantly, even at workplaces and all, we <clears throat> are using this term because of uh, you know the system around, like you know, which uh, forces one to you know take an extreme step. Yeah, 
15 step and i and i don't think that that final act should be lionized it should be seen as a, a, a killing and not as a, something that uh, you know he didn't he didn't uh, do it to himself it was done to him yeah thank you thank you sudipto thank you bala thank, thank you. you thank you sir